This is a review for a piece of software which is only available for Mac uh, called Sound Studio. As you can see, it is an audio editor. Here you have your sort of timeline here with your waveform. Up the top, you have add a marker. So we can add a marker like that. We can add a marker, say, here as well. We can also rename the marker. We can normalize the audio from here. We can fade in, do a special fade, fade out, crop, split the clip like this, add the information, and save it wherever we want to save it. We can delete here. It by default does a 32 bit float, but you can save it as a resolution of 8, 16, or 24. Down here we have the playback controls, including the record button, your time here, your meters here. If we go up, we can then go to preferences. And we have some preferences such as sample rate here, CD quality, DVD and Blu-ray quality, studio qualities, and even below. We can adjust presets here or select a preset. We can do audio input and output, so we can select what sort of input you want, such as the built-in microphone or the blue snowball. You can select an output device here as well, including AirPlay. You can play through input to output in, as a monitor. You can go to file, you can create a new file, new mono file, open, open recent, close, save, save as, revert, and file info. Here's your file info where you add your title, artist, album artist, album name, genre, is it part of a compilation, etc. More info such as the copyright, the director, the purchase date, is it a podcast or not. Lyrics if you need it. Album artwork as well. You can go to edit which gets to the sort of things that you would expect such as undo, redo, cut, copy and paste. Crop, split by markers, go to, set selection, Audio, you can loop the audio, play, record, stop, return to zero, which has also got a shortcut of command backspace. Playback speed, speed up or slow down the playback, play through, automatic recording, timer recording, change the sample rate from here. You can mix down to so see it is surround, you could mix it down to stereo or mix it down to mono. You then have insert, so you can insert things like markers in insert silence, insert some noise even, add or remove tracks, and filters. Now with the filters you can use audio units and to be honest you're probably going to have to because it does have a lot of features here including dynamic compression, noise gate expander, add noise, backwards and reverse audio, pitch and tempo, reverb, your 3 or 10 band equaliser, graphic equaliser, high pass filter, low pass filter. But do you notice straight away what's missing? And I have checked the help file. Noise removal. Even in the free software Audacity, you have a basic noise removal. So what you would do in that program is you would select a patch of this noise you want to get rid of. Click noise removal. Then it has a button called Git Profile. You click that, it analyzes the noise. Then you select everything you want to remove noise in. So you might, for example, select the whole audio file. You would then click Noise Removal again and OK, and it would remove the background noise. And that is a tool that is so useful, and I think probably a lot of people do use that all the time. Yet this program is a pay for program, and it is good. Uh, it has a nice interface and it has lots of options here that you would expect such as your fade, your amplify, your normalize, your dynamic compression and your equalizers and low pass filters yet the, it's missing just one key thing which is noise removal you can go to audio units and you see one of Apple's filters here so if you can find they've got like a band pass 
you got distortion delay, dynamic dynamic processor here, graphic equalizer of Apple's. Uh, but Apple, I don't think, has one listed here for noise removal. So you'd have to find a third-party program or plugin that is compatible with audio units that does noise removal, which is a real pity because that is one of the bare sort of necessities of an audio editing program is ba at least a basic noise removal tool. So let's see, for example, I can go to pitch and tempo. There is preset options in a lot of these tools and you can make your own preset. I should note it doesn't actually come with any presets so that would be nice if some of these tools that supported presets actually had a few included. So we can adjust the pitch here. So let's actually just play a little bit without it on. ...but also covers the possibility that a ship was scuttled but was still in fact the Titanic all along. Let's then select that again. I shall explain the evidence ranging from an insurance scam by White Star Line to an immense British government cover up. Okay, and you can get it to info from here. It is a real pity though you have filters and you have a lot of these that other programs have such as your di dynamic compressor, your noise gate, your low pass filter, your high pass filter and your pitch and tempo yet there's no noise removal that should be one of the first things to be included though you can use audio units. Here you can get to their help file from here as well. At the time of making this video I'm using the latest version of Sound Studio at least from their site. It's 4.7.5 made by Felt Tip Software. I should note though it seems like the Mac App Store version does have a 4.7.6. I'm not quite sure why there's a slightly newer one on the App Store yet not on their website. Normally it's the other way around. Okay, this is a sample of some audio recorded from the Snowball by Blue Microphones directly into Sound Studio. For export options, the formats you have is AAC, which is one of the ones you probably use the most, including WAVE. You then have ADTS AAC, I'm not quite sure what that is. You have AIFF, another version of that. You also have Apple's lossless audio format. You have KAF, FLAC, I think that's how you say it, Next and Sun Audio, OG Vor Vorbis, which is a sort of open free, open source sort of format, and Tab Delimited Text, not sure what that is. The only key one which is missing is MP3, but that is to do with licensing issues. You can actually export as MP3, but you have to download the lame mp3 encoder separately and add it. There's links on the uh, felt tips website about that so the program does support mp3 just not out of the box because of licensing issues. You also have bitrate so you go to AAC you can select from right down at 16 kilobits up to 320. If you select wave you break it some slightly different options such as 8, 16, 24-bit or 32-bit audio and that will affect, as you can see, your file size. Do I recommend this program? It's a nice alternative audio editor with a nice lot of features and nice interface. Very handy little program. Do I recommend you buy it? Well, I personally wouldn't buy it until there was some sort of noise removal. It's one of the most basic options you expect from any audio editor. So until that is included, I can't recommend you buy it. But, but I would download the trial though and give it a shot and see what you think. And even if you don't want to get it without the noise removal, I'd keep an eye on it as I'm sure eventually that will be added.
So thanks for watching, please like and share this video and if you could do me a huge favour and subscribe as it only takes a few seconds and it will help me out a lot. Thanks.